relevant one I can think of, and um, I think it right away because it, to me it's the most salient. Um, I I do a lot of independent reading, particularly on on the psychopathic personality. Um, so I'm going to use the PCLR and later editions. Um, as an example. So the PCLR, um, I won't go into much detail because this is just an example. The PCLR is called the Psychopathy Checklist Revised. Um, it was um, created by uh, Dr. Robert Hare, who did all his work actually here at uh, the University of British Columbia. This was, a, this was a, a scale that measured personality that was not SR, that was not self-report, okay? So compare that to the Myers-Briggs, right? I mean, if you have if you have something that is self-report, again, socially desirable responding, and the tendency for us to self-enhance towards our idealized self will skew the answers, right? Um, so again, the psychopathy checklist revised um, uh, two sub four factor model is an excellent example of one way that we can bypass this. Um, but again, one of the major criticisms in respond to that criticism in about how um, the, the Myers-Briggs is a self-reporting scale is that there's no way you can make a personality test have no component that is a self-reporting scale. You know what I mean? I mean, personality is very personal, more so than than, psycho, than psychopathy, right? Which is, you know, has a huge behavioral component or behavioral manifestations. Um, something like a personality inventory, many things, you're the only person who knows, right? So it kind of necessitates at least in part some some portion of the questionnaire to be self-reporting. So it is it is it is both a grave flaw and, is, and an inevitable flaw. Um, and again, back to the idea of self-reporting, um, you have to remember, and I, I did mention this in another viewer question that I think is really important. Um, when I was uh, answering a question uh, to a uh, username Quajaboy, he asked, why is it that my type keeps changing, right? And you remember what I said in that video. I, I told you guys that um, what the Myers-Briggs measures is not the intensity of certain characteristics or preferences. It measures the, the intensity of your self-awareness, right? Well, what does that mean? It means that, let's say, on a good day, you know, you go and take the test, you're one type. On another day, you know, you're, it's a bad day, you're in a bad mood, you're drunk or you're high, which tends to decrease self-awareness, um, and you take the test. Well, what will happen to that, right? Because the Myers-Briggs measures awareness of traits rather than the actual intensity of the traits, that may skew your results simply because you're less aware on that day. So, again, another major criticism of the Myers-Briggs. Um, the fourth major criticism that I can think of is um, this idea of a lack of test retest reliability. And in fact, I have gotten I have gotten so many um, personal messages in regards to this. Well, you know, why is it that it seems like every two times I take the test, I get something different, right? Um, that is an example of very low uh, test retest reliability. So you test once and you test again and again and again, and they don't seem to correlate or they don't seem to match all the time. Um, and that is certainly one of the one of the major flaws of the Myers Briggs is the fact that it is it is people tend to get different results under different contexts in different moods under different you know states of physiological arousal for example um, and again because it measures awareness rather than intensity of traits it is pathologically context sensitive it depends on the mood you're in it depends on what state you're in it depends on where you are if somebody's watching you. Um, and it, tends on a whole, it depends on a whole lot of factors. And because of this, um, the, um, uh, the Myers-Briggs tends to have, well, less test retest reliability than, say, some other, uh, some other personality scales, such as the uh, five-factor personality model, which I am quite a fan of right now, um, otherwise known as the ocean model. So it measures sort of your five big, uh, big characteristics, openness, uh, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Um, so again, that would probably be the ma fourth major sort of roadblock to to um, the Mars being, being accepted as a legitimate a legitimate example of psychometrics. Um, the fifth one that I could think of is the fact that. Um, <clears throat> The, the Mars break has very little scientific base. And you remember, again, back in my part one video when I was um, going over the history of the Mars break, remember that I mentioned that neither of the founders had any, had any you know, um, scientific training, no, you know, no training in, say, um, scientific st um, statistics, correlations, none of that. Um, I, was, I was not implying that uh, it was a bad decision to shut um, Myers and Briggs down because of their lack of credentials. Because... Um, one of the things that the scientific community must pride itself on is its consistency, you know, and part and something that is necessary for consistency is this idea of training, right? This idea of numbers, this idea of, of objective statistics, which the Myers-Briggs certainly lacks, right? Um, 
And again, um, because Myers and Briggs based much of the Myers Briggs off of the works of Young, and um, the way that Young operated is something that we would not consider to have much scientific integrity today. Um, Young based most, most of his uh, most of his writing and his theories on two things. Okay, introspection and anecdotes are not objective; they're not empirical. Um, the second idea of uh, the Myers Briggs la lacking sufficient peer review. Okay, so if you're involved in the research community, you will know that. Every single time you you know you finish experiment, you have to write it up and you have to present it you know at conferences to be peer reviewed. So to accept um, criticism from your peers, in this case you know other researchers in your field. <clears throat> and the thing about the Myers Briggs is that um, uh, the majority, actually I would say almost all of the presentations um, made at conferences in re um, to seek peer review were conducted at conferences which. Sp first of all, support of the MBTI, and second of all, held training workshops for it. So again, in terms of, in terms of being objective, in terms of being um, impartial, there is some question there. One of the strengths of the scientific community is this idea of peer review. It's the idea of researchers building off each other's knowledge, and part of that is being able to debunk, the, debunk each other's theories, um, something that Myers-Briggs has not um, been forced to confront is peer review, is criticism, and by confront I don't mean some guy coming up to you and saying this is wrong. I mean something. I mean you know some researcher taking the time to create an experiment, you know, to go through all the statistics, to write it up, to prove you wrong. Um, another criticism of the MBTI is the lack, the lack of internal consistency that the Myers Briggs type inventory tends to have. Now, what is internal consistency? Internal consistency is the idea that no matter how many different ways I ask you a question, no matter how I word it, you know, no matter you know what context I'm putting it in, if I'm measuring the same thing, they should be correlated. Okay, so what that means is that let's say I have a question on the test asking, do you like to you know do you like to ride bikes? Um, and then I I ask you another question, um, do you like to ride uh, you know metal frames with wheels on them? Um, Implying, of course, implication is that it's a bike. If if a test has high internal consistency, then your answer to both those questions should be yes. Um, and again, that is one of that is one of the major criticisms of the MBTI, is that because it's too because it's pathologically con um, sensitive to context, um, <clears throat> it leads to lower internal consistency. Sort of the last major flaw that the Myers Briggs has been criticized for is that it's it's fairly sort of crappy um, analytic structure. Um, what does that mean? Um, first of all, you have to understand that um, uh, the Myers-Briggs type in Venery, type. You have to understand that. Um, <clears throat> so basically, I think it was uh, McRae and uh, McRae and Costa uh, published a paper in 1989 um, in which they tried to analyze the structure of the Myers-Briggs um, as a psychometric. And they found, very interestingly, that um, on the individual scale, so whether you're an E and I or an N and S, a T and F or a P or a J, um, the distributions tended to be follow the normal distribution rather than a bimodal distribution, which just flies in the face completely of this concept of type. Um, <clears throat> so what does that look like? Uh, well, take a look at this diagram. Okay, so this diagram shows um, a normal distribution. Okay, so a normal distribution. An example of this would be, say, IQ in the general population. Bell curves um, for grades at your school. Um, so there is a mean, and um, you know, given one, two, and three standard deviations, 68, uh, 95, and 99.9 percent .9 confidence intervals. Um, <clears throat> what they found is that when they when they um, charted the uh, the the types of subjects, I think it had an n value of 200 and something. So that's fairly statistically significant. Um, they found that um, it would follow a normal distribution. So that's one peak, as you can see, rather than a bimodal distribution, which is two peaks, right? <clears throat> and the problem with this is that because due to the due to the definition and the concept of type, um, it would require you to cut off um, cut off sort of or or create distinctions between types. Um, between the modes or between the peaks, okay. So what does that look like? Well, <clears throat> what that is means that, okay, if you have a bimodal structure, which it should look like in theory, by you know by the by the you know the theory of the or the concept of type, is that you cut off between the two peaks, and one peak is say thinking, and the other peak is feeling, right? But again, the research done by uh, McRae and